welcome back to It's in the Details. Uh, once again, please remember to share, like, subscribe, rate, review, comment, wherever you get the podcast. Help grow the show. First of all, I know you can't believe this because I can't believe this. This is episode 10. 10. Uh, I don't know how we got here either. Uh, it feels like just a couple of weeks ago, I was so nervous about releasing this thing that I almost didn't do it. I mean, I knew I was going to do it, but I don't, you know, that feel when you, you don't want to do something, but you're going to do it. So you just do it. And then you wait to see if I don't, the world explodes. I don't know, but nothing happened other than people liking it. I like doing it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Basically, what I'm trying to say is thank you, I think. Uh, I think I'm trying to say thank you uh, because I'm not sure that we'd be at 10 without um, all of the people who have said yes to coming on the show, all of the people that will be on the show in the future, um, and really all of the people that have allowed me uh, to enter their brains with my voice. Uh, so I appreciate your time. I appreciate your eyes and ears. Um, I mean, if you like it, tell a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend and let's, let's grow this thing. But it's, it's pretty cool to me, even though it's not really a big thing that we're at 10 episodes, but it's kind of a big thing that we're at 10 episodes. So, uh, Thanks. It's been so much fun. Going to keep working at it. Keep trying to figure out how to make a better, more entertaining product. And it's pretty cool that we all kind of share this small piece of the internet together right now. Um, so it's already been a fun ride. Uh, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. Uh, given that, I thought... For the 10th episode, I was going to share some of the things that are like true favorites to me and uh, a peek inside of how I like to really enjoy these things, uh, TVs, TV shows, movies, all the things that we watch. Um, so I'll start with F1. I, and I know uh, I seem obsessed with F1. That's fine. Maybe I am. I think I am. Uh, but... How do I enjoy F1? Why do I like it so much? Well, number one, I love it because it's lovable. Drama, intrigue, uh, danger, fast cars, interesting personalities. It's amazing. P.S. Remember, May 23rd, they go to Monaco. You're probably going to hear about it on the news and then wonder why you didn't watch it after I've been telling you to watch it. So just watch it or not and miss out. That's fine. Do it. You do you. That's cool. Um, but that's number one. I love it because it's lovable. Number two, and this is kind of a circuitous route to get to what I'm talking about, but about seven or eight years ago, I heard two comedians talking on a podcast. The main comedian of importance is named Todd Glass. He was talking about uh, hosting dinner parties and how he could make uh, that event even more enjoyable. And he found that something he really loved about going out to eat at restaurants was at the end of the meal, you get this nice, hot, warm towel. Towel off, you feel clean, you feel refreshed from your meal, and then you can move on with your life. So he decided he was going to bring that practice to his dinner parties at home and thought it was ridiculous that he was only enjoying a hot towel at a restaurant and elevated dinner parties for himself and all of his guests. So I take that approach when I'm watching something I really enjoy or I'm really excited about. F1. During the pandemic, there's not that much going on. I'm not a rule breaker. So I'm typically at home and uh, that got a lot of time. And I love F1. And if there's F1 stuff on, I watch it. So Fridays, practice. They air practice. I'm working. 
So I have the practice on and I listen. I really like what's going on in F1, but I'm so far behind, I'm trying to catch up. So I, I try to consume everything. So practice Fridays. I don't do anything for it. Saturdays and Sundays, qualifying. Pre-qualifying, pre-race, qualifying, and then post-race or post-qualifying. It's a big chunk of time. I'm not the kind of person that just feels comfortable just, you know, doing nothing on my couch for four hours watching people race cars and then talk about how they race those cars. So, and no shade to anybody who is comfortable doing that. You do you. You do what you got to do to make your life feel great. I'll do what I got to do. And what I got to do is work out hard. I work out hard. Saturdays, Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, race days, I work out hard. I, I put in some weights or I run or I bike hard. Put in a stretch and then shower, do all that stuff. And then I make some delicious breakfast. I'm talking... I make some French toast, or I make some pancakes, or I make some waffles. Your boy bought a waffle maker. Pandemic purchase. Uh, so I do one of those things, or I'll go a traditional savory route. Some nice, soft, scrambled, cheesy eggs, some roasted tomatoes, some, t some toast, uh, a couple strips of bacon, and then also some delicious coffee. It, it, when it when it was cold outside, hot coffee. Now it's hot outside, cold coffee. But that's the package. That's the F1 ritual package. Uh, and then I turn up some speakers. My neighbors probably hate me. Get the bass moving through the floor so you can feel it on the couch. And let these F1 teams take me for a ride. And then I talk to you people about it. So... That's why. So basically, do something for you that makes the things you enjoy even more enjoyable. It feels obvious, but I don't know how many people are always taking that into account. Uh, this past weekend, I figured I was finally gonna get into Interstellar. I don't know if you've seen it. It's, old, it's like a seven or eight year old movie. Matthew McConaughey. They shoot him up into the stars, and he does stuff up there. Uh, but it's a, it's a Christopher Nolan movie, another mind bender from Christopher Nolan. Uh, it's really it was a really enjoyable movie. Uh, I'm assuming most of you have already seen it. If you haven't seen it, you got to see it. But in getting ready to watch it, I was at the grocery store and I said, you're watching Interstellar tonight. You've been waiting to watch it for about eight years. You should do something good for Interstellar. So what I did was I bought some Oreos and milk. Oreos and milk. I love Oreos. I can't have Oreos in the house. Diabetes, because that's the direct root for me and Oreos. Because if I have Oreos in the house, I need Oreos in my belly as quickly as possible. It's, it's bad news. It's real bad. It's not good. They disappear fast. For, for real, though, like when I go to the grocery store and I'm going to pick up some Oreos, I, I, it's like, hey, hey, Oreos, I know, I know, I know we haven't seen each other in a long time. You, you're coming home with me today, though, Oreos. You come, yeah, yeah. But Oreos, listen, it's more of an Airbnb situation than a, you just signed a lease. Like, you're coming home with me today, I know. You're coming home with me today, and it's going to be cheap. You don't have to pay much. In fact, Oreos, free, free stay for you. But... Just like with any other Airbnb, the owners are going to come in and they're going to be like, there are Oreo crumbs everywhere. What happened? And a couple tried to escape. A, a couple Oreos tried to escape because they saw what I was doing to the rest of the Oreos. But I got them all. I got them all. Oreos, you're here for a good time, not a long time. But 
regardless. I had the Oreos ready for me and Interstellar. Now, I waited about an hour before I got into the Oreos and the milk with Interstellar, about an hour into the movie. The movie is reaching this critical point where they are going to fly a spaceship into a wormhole, okay? We don't know what's going to happen when this spaceship flies into the wormhole. We have no idea. Uh, Maybe some astrophysicists. I hope that's the the space people. The space people know maybe what's going to happen when that spaceship goes into the wormhole. But me, I don't know what's going to happen when it gets into the wormhole. It could, anything could happen. They're not going to explode because it's an hour in. You're not going to kill Matthew McConaughey. It's his movie. But I don't know what's going to happen. While that's happening on screen, I've got an Oreo and some milk. Tangentially, I understand this is about the fourth or fifth time you've heard me talking about cookies. I don't even like cookies that much. I mean, I like cookies, but I don't like them enough for you to be hearing me talk about cookies 50% of my shows, but cookies, milk, Oreos, right? So as they're about to fly into that wormhole, we don't know what's going to happen. I got an Oreo cookie and some milk, and while I don't have them a lot, I know what's about to happen right here. I know this milk is going to envelop this cookie, and I know exactly what it's going to taste like when I put it in my mouth. So think about the juxtaposition of what's going on here. No clue what's going on on screen. Super nostalgia about to go on in my mouth. No clue. All the clues. Is this going to explode? Probably not. Is this going to explode? Probably yes. And it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. So enjoyable. The movie was already good. It got better once all that cookie and milk and sugar slid down my gullet. Oh, it was delicious. There are, there are two Oreos left in the package now. I told you, Oreos in my house, Oreos in my belly. It was days, not even weeks, and the cookies are almost gone. Diabetes, the di- diabetes. I also wanted to put you up on two of my favorite actors, period. Um, Jason Bateman, whom you would have heard me talk about over this time in some capacity, be it Arrested Development or something else, and Melissa McCarthy. Both of them hilarious separately, kind of hilarious together as well. I realized the connection I had between both of them when Identity Thief came on my screen recently. Identity Thief is a movie where Melissa McCarthy is running around stealing people's identities. She stole Jason Bateman's identity uh, because his name was Sandy. Sandy something. I can't remember what his last name was. But he has a unisex name that makes his identity available to be stolen by a woman. Hijinks and Sue. The movie's not that good, but both of them are in it. Very entertaining. A really good ambient movie you could just have on. You'll look up from your phone a couple times, uh, uh, more than a couple times, uh, to see what's going on, but you don't have to pay close attention to it. But it's a solid movie. It's got some good jokes. It's fun. But my two of my all-time favorites all time. I don't know if that's top five, top 10, two of my all time favorites, Bad Words starring Jason Bateman and Spy starring Melissa McCarthy. (sighs) Bad Words. If you haven't seen Bad Words or Spy, actually, Bad Words or Spy, I'll put this out here first. They are not politically correct movies. If you find yourself being offended by many things currently, just skip those movies. 
don't bother watching them. There will be parts in it you will not enjoy. Don't get into it. If you can laugh freely at almost everything, bad words, spy. Bad words. Jason Bateman plays a 40-year-old man in a children's spelling bee. Let me say that one more time. Jason Bateman plays a 40-year-old man who's participating in a child's spelling bee. Okay? And it's not any of the things your mind might immediately jump to. He's very smart. He's also uh, equally vengeful and rude to the children, their parents, the people running the spelling bee, the people helping him maneuver through the spelling bee. He's rude to everybody. And it is fantastic. Hilarious. <laughs> you, I can't get enough. I think I've seen bad words six or seven times now. If it's on, I'm watching it. If it's not on and I don't have anything else to do, I might just turn it on. It's, a, it's one of my favorites, one of my all-time favorites. Bad Words includes my second favorite mid-movie montage in history. I mean, great hijinks, pranks, fake deaths, uh, stealing. A, a lot of... A lot of really good friendship building in what amounts to be a buddy comedy movie between two people you wouldn't think would be buddies. And it is a riot, that movie. Laughs, nonstop cringing. Uh, it feels over the top at parts, but not so over the top that someone like me can't handle it. I love it. Fun fact, number one favorite mid-movie montage, Team America World Police, uh, where the entire montage, the song playing over top, is a song about montages. Those South Park guys are geniuses. Also stay away from Team America World Police. If you've got politically correct being offended issues, if you know what I'm saying. Definitely don't watch Team America World Police. You could get through, you could get through Bad Words and Spy. You will not make it through Team America World Police and its puppets, but you'll not make it through. Don't watch that one. Uh, cameos, or, or co-stars, co I should say. Uh, Allison Janney is amazing in it. Catherine Hahn is amazing in it. You've seen both of them countless times, even if you don't remember their names, but you'll love them. They just bring serious comedy whenever they're on the screen. It uh, also includes two scenes that might be the first, two scenes in this movie of Karens before they became a thing. Karens, the Karens were Karening before Karen's Karen in real life. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say. There's some good Karen scenes in it. And you'll enjoy those too. There's also this incredible link between two of the craziest comedy sex scenes you'll ever see. Uh, Jason Bateman is involved and not involved in both of them. There's an outrageous sex scene in Bad Words, Jason Bateman, Katherine Hahn, and there's another outrageous sex scene in Identity Thief, Jason Bateman, Melissa McCarthy, and Eric Stone Street. Eric Stone Street from Modern Family and all of those things. But the two sex scenes, you can't believe. There's nothing crazy, there's no nudity, there's none of that stuff, but the words and the actions, <laughs> the words and the actions, I just, it's one of those situations where you're like, who thought, who thought of this? How did you come up with the kind of torture <laughs> you're putting us through as viewers for laughter? Then you've got 
Spy, which is one of the best, I think, one of the best action comedy movies that have ever been created. And I know that sounds crazy with the Bad Boys franchise and things like that out there. But it's a different, it's a different kind of action comedy. Uh, so Spy starts out with uh, three minutes in, you realize the movie you are about to watch is going to be filled with silliness and foolishness immediately. They don't waste any time. Boom. This is going to be dumb. But dumb, dumb the way you like. Right? Like dumb that's perfect. And a minute or so after that, bang, action movie. Action for real. Like a real action movie. Not, not Falcon and the Winter Soldier action. But like action comedy action, but done well. And now that I brought it up, is Winter Soldier slash Bucky the best superhero we got going right now? Like the best, most intriguing, best action, best character development. Is he the best? I think he's the best. Tell me I'm wrong. You got Melissa McCarthy who admittedly is not the traditional action comedy star. I mean, you just wouldn't... It's not the first person you would assume would be in an action comedy. And she kills it. Really kills it. The, the, the whole production kills it. I'm sure there are stunt people involved. They've also got uh, Jason Statham's in the movie. But he doesn't really carry the action. She carries the action for the most part in this movie. And they, they pull it off well. It's, it's super believable. Jason Statham actually helps carry a lot of the comedy in the movie. And watching him and Melissa McCarthy go at it is amazing. And I realized, like, I, I, I've talked about Hobbs and Shaw a lot um, with The Rock and Jason Statham going at it. And really, Jason Statham's just good at comedy, period, because he goes at it with Melissa McCarthy and crushes it. Um, he, he delivers a bunch of outrageous Chuck Norris, I'm the best person on earth type lines. And I think my favorite one, and I quote, nothing can kill me. I'm immune to 179 different types of poison. I know this because I once ingested all 179 at once while I was in an underground poison ingesting crime ring. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And that's the whole movie. It's just a bunch of over the top craziness you can't believe. Jude Law's in it as well. Rose Byrne, another one you've seen in a, everything. You've seen her all over the place. You might not remember the name. Once you see her, you'll remember her, and you'll think, I need to watch more of her, too. So um, I just wanted to, to share a bit of the stuff I love. Uh, if you've already seen these movies, watch them again. They're amazing. Uh, if you haven't already seen these movies, watch them. They're amazing. To wrap it all up, 10 episodes down. Next step, 20. Next step, 30. We keep pushing. Um, watch those movies. Uh, watch F1. Whatever you do choose to watch, if it's none of those things. Can you make it an even more enjoyable experience at your house? Uh, it's amazing what a little thing can do. If it's meaningful to you, what a, mean, a little meaningful thing can do to elevate your experience and just give yourself a little bit more enjoyment when everything going on outside is so crazy. And it's not everything, it's not doom and gloom, but it's not normal. So make your experience just a little bit better. You're in control of it. Uh, 
But thanks again for all the support. Uh, please remember to share, like, rate, review, comment, subscribe in all of the places. Take care, y'all. Peace.